500 years ago, the giant lizard of La Palma on the Canary Islands was thought to be extinct, the victim of cats and rats introduced by man. But that changed recently when the lizard was discovered clinging to a rock face too steep for predators. The giant lizard's discovery may not mean much to you, but for a television archivist like me, it serves as a great parable. For 30 years, independent television dealers and distributors played an important part in the communities they served across North America. But sometime during the late 1970s, they began to disappear, the victims of big box stores undercutting their prices. While looking over ads for television sets in my book, Window to the Future, I began to wonder about the dealers and distributors who once sold them. What happened? Were all independent television set retailers extinct? Or like the giant lizard of La Palma, was it possible some were clinging onto rock faces too steep for Walmart and Best Buy? I intend to find out. This film is my search for the last TV man. Watching TV was, was a family occasion, not an individual occasion. When I was a grade schooler, we got our first television, our first color TV mm -hmm. from Hutchins as a Christmas gift. Right, look at the new chroma color picture, sharp and clear. I'll say a majority of our clientele come in because of word of mouth. You gotta go to Wingers. When are we gonna get a television set? Television? We can't afford a TV set. Oh! Yeah! Thanks for the TV. We need you. But it's so scrambled. It's terrible. I can see that. No, Daddy, not that dial. Let me show you. I can do it. Always called him Walt. And if they needed something, the wife may say, well, go to Central TV and talk to Walt. You know, he says they came in, they want something, let's sell them something. Hi there, friend. Well, this set you've chosen is one of our best. It has our Titan 300 beat chassis. Powered sentry systems. I was out to a place and uh, working on the set and uh, the, the woman told me, well, you don't need to even bother because we're going to take it back. Well, they were mad about something and uh, they, they, they were upset with Walt. They'd sold him that thing. And then well, about that time, the husband came home and he says, I just bought our freezer. <laughs> From who? Walt. <laughs> and yeah, his first is Poma TV. That was next to the bar. So how did he manage selling television sets and serving drinks? How did that... Uh, Get him that drunk and bring him on in. Hey. That, that worked a lot, I think. <laughs> you have the finest lightweight portable in the industry. That is you, though. Yeah, that's me. Our next model is our model 2009. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure to take you through our plants and facilities. To the I go, well, it was shot. And, and uh, she goes, no, it fell over on, on something sharp. And I go, twice? Because it had two bullet holes in it. And we're going, you know, they don't warranty a set with a bullet hole in it. <laughs> well, he actually turned us in to the Bureau of Electronic Repairs. They found for that customer, and we had to do an $800 picture tube job. Crazy! Well, if you're sane, I'd rather be crazy! We had to sit down at the, uh, the uh, convent down there. It, Toledo, and the uh, com complained that, uh, two or three times. No wonder your set doesn't work too well. Your antenna isn't hooked up. Every time I'd get there, I'd turn it on and come right on. So this little nun about the size of Joanne there, she, she turned it up. That, if that comes on this time, I'm going to put my foot right through that screen. We did wild things. Then uh, one of them was uh, we give away a Shetland pony for every appliance they bought. And they, they took the back seat out of the car, four door sedan, opened both doors, let the pony in, shut the doors. It was around 1956, mm -hmm. and he said, "Let's have a pole sitter on top of the tower." Uh, I think this was a grand reopening after redesigning the store. A fellow named Stan Cooper lived in that tower for about eight days. A contest to guess how long he stays up there. 
His coming down was based, I believe, on a sales quota. And he never came down. He, he ate, he slept, and maybe had a little latrine. I can't swear to that, but they had, they used, they used a bucket on a rope to send stuff up, and <laughs> I assume they sent stuff down. Have you ever noticed, uh, and I recently noticed this, that the Zenith color logo with the, uh, the tri-red, green, and blue on there? Did you ever see the 1953 film War of the Worlds? If you look at the aliens, the camera, the kind of eyes they have, it's the same configuration. And I'm wondering if the Zenith graphic designer had watched that film, and I wonder if Zenith even knew that, that they, had, it, it, they must have lifted it, or at least borrowed some of it. This is in a television and appliance store, yet it is part of the community. And I know that's a legacy that we got from Bill, who got it from Jack. I'm here because this is a family-owned business. That's why I want to buy from you. One gentleman is coming from, I think he's on the other side of Portland. He came in and he said, I was looking for a family-run business. We would work together. You know, if somebody was looking for an RCA, you'd say, well, Jerry has RCA and he's over on this corner. Hey, I'm here because mom and dad bought here, and grandpa, we have a few fourth generations, great grandpas bought from you guys. And this place was packed. And I can remember taking deposits down to the bank for them. It had like $20,000 in it, you know? Of course, nowadays, as we sell a TV, we don't see someone for a decade or further unless they need another TV. And we're like on the lowest, <laughs> You know, the lowest rung of society. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean. People don't appreciate the service as much anymore. Yeah, we're kind of an old dying breed, you know. Owning a business is like putting on an overcoat you can't take off. That's a rough business. I'm getting out. Oh, <laughs> you may be the last TV oh, man. <laughs> Do I get a prize? Oh, no. yeah, you, you will be the last TV man. Okay. As you can see, I've met some interesting TV men and women in the Pacific Northwest. Are there others in North America? I'd like to find out. Further investigation will provide an answer. Let's search together. Your support of TV Man can make that happen. Thank you. I'd love a new TV.